Hello, my name is Stephen Strittmatter. I'm at Yale University. We're going to tell you a little bit about our work on progranulin. This gene and protein had been identified a few years ago as being causative in frontotemporal lobe degeneration, but the mechanism whereby it would interact with neurons and participate in dementia was unclear. So two people in the lab, Feng Hua and Tihan, started working on this project, and they'll tell you about the experiments that they did. Since progranulin is a secret glycoprotein, we hypothesize that progranulin might function through binding to a cell surface receptor. We found progranulin binds to neurons with high affinity, suggesting there is a specific progranulin binding partner on neuronal cell surface. Next, we wondered the identity of the pro protein that mediates progranulin binding in neurons. We performed expression cloning by transfecting cDNA library pools into COL7 cells and screening for clones that would enable high affinity cell surface progranulin binding. We identified only one clone from the screen. This cDNA clone encodes Sotlin, a transmembrane protein of the VPS10 family. Progranulin comprises 7.5 granulin motifs. To determine which part of progranulin is involved in sotlin binding, we made truncation mutants. We found the C-terminal 100 residues of progranulin, which contains granulin E and franking region, are fully sufficient for binding to sotlin. To test whether sotlin contributes to progranulin binding in vivo, we measured the binding of progranulin C-terminal region to neurons cultured from wild type and sotlin knockout mice. Deletion of sotlin significantly reduced the binding of progranulin C-terminal fragment to cortical neurons, confirming that sotlin is a main neuronal binding site for progranulin in vivo. To understand the function of progranulin in the central nervous system, we decided to look at a neuronal stress model that has similar pathological hallmarks as the disease. In this model, we transected the sciatic nerve of the mouse and looked at the spinal cord. When faced with neuronal stresses like injury or disease, there's a dramatic change in the type of supporting glial cells called microglia. They migrate to the stressed area and alter their morphology. We saw a dramatic increase in progranulin in the injured site compared to the uninjured site, specifically in these activated microglia. Sotlin, on the other hand, is mainly localized to neurons. Based on the different origins of progranulin and sotlin, indicating the paracrine interaction, we tested with the sotlin endocytose progranulin. It does so very actively. In this movie, what you can see is that green sotlin internalizes the red progranulin into cells. So we show that progranulin that has been internalized by sotlin actually ends up in lysosomes, which are organelles that help to degrade cellular material. We also found that progranulin levels are in fact regulated by sotlin in mice. In a normal animal, progranulin is present at a detectable concentration in the brain and in the serum. When sotlin is missing, we see a dramatic increase in the progranulin level, probably due to the lack of internalization of progranulin and shuttling it to lysosomes. With regards to function, clearly sotlin binds to the C-terminus of progranulin with high affinity, and it regulates progranulin levels through endocytosis. This leaves the open question of how progranulin plays into altering the protein TDP43, which aggregates to cause frontotemporal lobe dementia. The simplest model is that progranulin sotlin complexes act to initiate signal transduction via sotlin at the cell surface, as sotlin does for some other ligands. Alternatively, sotlin may function as a primarily to titrate progranulin levels in the extracellular space. But the most intriguing possibility is that neuronal sotlin delivers microglial progranulin to neuronal lysosomes in order to allow proper autophagic clearance of TDP43. We are currently working to test these different models of progranulin sotlin interaction. Well, I hope you appreciated this description from Feng Hua and Tihan. We know now that there's a connection between progranulin and sortolin, and future studies will explain 
how this is linked to FTLD and the dementing process.